What's up guys, I'm Cliff Curtis with the Creator's Cup and today we are going to use water as a lens for our cell phone camera. So if you're sitting at home trying to think of something you can do with your camera phone that's unique or creative or just a little different, I think this is a great way to get started. So the cool thing about this project is the water actually acts like a lens itself. The curvature in the water actually refracts the light the same way a lens does. And the other thing that happens is like a lens, it actually flips the image upside down. So when you do this, you'll need to think about your subject and whether it's right side up or upside down and get that set up ahead of time. A lot of times I'll do these kind of photos and when I'm done, I'll just flip the whole thing over because it really doesn't make a whole lot of difference. And all we're really doing is just taking a little bit of science and combining it with photography to create something kind of unique that you don't really think about every day. We're using this drone as our subject. You can use anything you want. We actually used a pumpkin last fall as our subject, and we used the stock of a pumpkin to put the water droplet on. In this case, the drone and the joystick from the drone because you might as well stick to a theme. I only have the tripod here because it was just easier for me to adjust up and down. And when I'm doing these kind of tutorials, I want things to be kind of fast and smooth so I can explain it to you as we go. And so if we have to make changes, you guys aren't having to wait on me. But honestly, all you really need is your camera phone, something to put a water droplet on and something to take a picture of. A little light's helpful too, but it does not need to be anything this fancy. Speaking of lighting, that's where we will get started. Your subject needs to be the brightest thing in the scene. And in this case, we're using this drone with a light directly above it. If we want, we can add some accent to it. And I'll just do that right now, taking this little guy and we'll throw some blue light on it. That gives the bottom of the drone a little bit of a blue glow. So whatever your subject is, if it has a bottom that's exposed like this, an extra accent light can make your shot that much more creative and that much more unique. Outside of that, there's not much else to the lighting. The rest of the light in this room is actually just to light this so you guys can see what's going on. And we do want to avoid getting too much light on the background if we can help it. There's a couple ways you can go about this. If you have a black curtain or something you can hang around your subject and keep it far away from the subject so the light doesn't bleed on it, that would be really helpful. If you don't have something like that, you can go get poster board and you could put that behind your subject as well to block out some of the light. So in this case, we are using a large key light with a soft box, but if you don't have that, you can just take an office lamp or anything and put it directly over the subject or off to the side, really just anywhere that the light isn't shining directly on the background so that the subject does stand out from the background. The other thing to take into consideration is you want your subject so bright that you have to turn the exposure down on your camera, which will again darken your background and make it stand out more. So now that we have the lighting taken care of, we need to figure out the position everything needs to be on. If the subject is a little higher or lower, you might have to adjust it because the water droplet is actually gonna reverse everything. It's gonna make everything look upside down and backwards. So down is up, up is down, and everything's just crazy. You'll see what I'm talking about once you start. So ideally, it's a lot less complicated if you get everything on the same plane. The other thing you wanna look for, if possible, try to keep your subject away from a surface like a table so that it's out in open air. That way there's no light reflecting up into the water droplet and then into the camera because the droplet will show that light and it really won't look very good. The next thing we'll wanna do is actually create the water droplet. So once everything else is set up and ready to go, we're gonna move on to the actual joystick or whatever your object is that's gonna hold the water. This needs to be something that's about a quarter inch in diameter that the water droplet can beat up on. So the surface tension will make it hold that water droplet shape. If it's very sharp or if it's uneven or not flat, the water's just gonna dump off to the side. So it also needs to be pretty level. And if anything, a little bit cup shaped. There is a trick to make this easier. We actually melted a little candle wax on the joystick to create this kind of like smooth surface that's also not very sticky to allow the surface tension in the water to ball up. And all we did was just take a joystick light a candle, let it burn for a second, and dip it in that wax, and then very carefully smooth the wax out relatively flat, and then kind of made a little cup shape. And that allows it to hold that water droplet very nice and very evenly. Once you have that done, we put the joystick back on and get it nice and level so that the water doesn't spill off. If you have a water dropper or an old like ketchup bottle or a syringe or something that can drip the water out slowly, that would also work a lot better than just pouring it on. But in this case, we're just gonna pour it on and see how it goes. All right, there we go. So depending on what phone you have and what camera app you have, this could be a little different, but at the end of the day, it's all gonna be relatively similar. We've used Filmic Pro and Open Camera. I'll leave information below about those two and also just the app that's built into the Samsung S9. They all work really well. And honestly, for this shot, 
The built-in app isn't too bad. You just want to take it over to the pro setting. The pro setting actually lets you adjust things in the photo versus just the camera making all the decisions on its own because the camera is going to get a little confused by this lighting in this situation. So when we move in, we're going to want to focus on the water droplet and we're going to want to adjust the exposure down. A lot of times it's easier to set it to manual focus if you have that option and go all the way to the closest possible setting and then just move the phone as close as you can get and be perfectly in focus with the center of the water droplet or the subject, or in this case, the drone that's inside of the water droplet. It's a lot easier than trying to keep touching the focus button and to get that to work out. The other thing, you're probably gonna to wanna to turn the exposure way down if it's on auto, or if you're gonna go through your manual settings, which would be ideal, turn the ISO to 100 or less, and then go into the shutter speed and adjust it so everything's relatively dark except the subject. You want it to be bright. So once we've done that, we'll get it set to where everything looks like it's in focus. Then we're also gonna to wanna to block the light coming in from the top of the droplet. So as I take my hand above the droplet, you'll see the light get blocked. And that will make everything look a lot cleaner and just really help the image a lot. And once you have all of your settings correct, you'll go in, take the picture. Now this is something you're gonna to have to be really patient on. It's gonna take a while to get this right. I took probably about 70 or 80 pictures before I got one that I was happy with. Getting it perfectly in focus, getting the lighting right, getting your subject set to the right height, all of those things are a little tricky but it's worth it. In the end, you'll get a shot you're really, really proud of. And there are a lot of different things you can do. You don't just have to use a drone or a joystick or whatever. You can try different things. And then once you get out into nature, you can do this with leaves and other things like that. And you actually see things you haven't seen before. And that's the fun of photography is you get to get out there and explore and see things you've never noticed. It really makes it a great hobby and you don't need a fancy camera to do it. It's really amazing how much you can do with just a cell phone. So don't be discouraged if you don't have a nice camera to get started. Cell phones can be a lot of fun to go out and play around with. This is just one of many creative ways you can start doing photography with your cell phone. We really appreciate all the support yet again. I appreciate you guys sticking out through this whole video. And if you would, if you enjoyed this, please subscribe and please give it a like. We're gonna put out videos like this at least once a week to help teach you guys tips and tricks about filming both with a good camera and with a good cell phone and how you can just get creative as well as how to grow your YouTube channels if that's what you're trying to do. We got a lot of positive feedback on our last video about cell phone camera settings. And we also had a drawing for a lens kit. The next video is gonna announce the winner for that because that actually doesn't get closed till Friday night and we're filming this on Friday. So our next video, which should come out tomorrow, will tell you who won that lens kit. Thanks again and we'll see you guys in the next video.